Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Elon Community Church, United Church of Christ. And it is so good to see you here in person. We know that there are many on Facebook this morning, on Facebook Live. I hope you're greeting one another. Uh, we are, know that there will be those who will be watching our streaming on the web page, as well as those who will be watching YouTube a little later, maybe today or sometime this week. We want to welcome all of you. If you are worshiping with us for uh, maybe a few times or just the first time, you'll notice that there is an opportunity to join us or let us know you're here by sending us a quick email and just sending your greetings. It's really important that we would like to get to know everyone who's being a part of our church services so that we can just say thank you and also know that we're a part of a greater community. We have so much uh, going on uh, today and this week. I just want to go ahead and get started, but um, the work people are coming in this week to do the flooring now in the sanctuary. This is and should be the last step um, and so if all goes well, there's even a chance we could be in the sanctuary as early as this coming Sunday. But to play it safe, we're thinking it's going to be a week from Sunday, just to play it safe. But we, are, we will be uh, making announcements about that for you um, as we prepare um, to see how things go with the, with the work. But there is going to be a new floor underneath uh, where the pews are. The ceiling is now finished. Uh, everything is done there, and there will be new carpet then laid. That will be the last thing that will happen later this week, uh, and that will be laid in the uh, chancel area. So we're just very excited about the fact that it's, everything is just about done. So um, with all of that, we just want to say if you've been waiting to worship uh, and coming into the sanctuary, we'll make sure that you are also safely taken care of in the in the sanctuary if, uh, if that's the place you feel like you might feel like to want to worship. We know that there's been a big spike in cases of COVID. Uh, we've had more than one church member now have COVID, um, and uh, uh, we're just mindful of them today as well. In that spirit, we are doing a couple things differently, and we sure picked well today. Um, the pastors of the Elon community who have always and historically done the Elon community Thanksgiving service, usually the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, have chosen to do that service today at 2 o'clock. And the weather could not be better. It's a drive-in service at the Elon First United Methodist Church on uh, Westbrook. It's right across the street from uh, Twin Lakes. And you will come in, drive into the parking lot. There's a broad, we have a way to broadcast the service onto your radio. You'll know which, which uh, station to tune into. You'll be able to hear the whole thing. But it's so nice. You may also want to bring a lawn chair or two and just sit right outside of your car. And you can enjoy the service. But the trick is we all need to be there. And so as many as can be, we've been watching these drive-in events so we know that they can happen. And a lot of churches have been actually worshiping in a drive-in setting. So, but here's the other thing. When you come at 2, please bring either a, um, uh, some canned food or if you'd like to make a cash donation or a check donation, you can do that. Um, but we are going to be doing that to feed the local hungry. That's what we've always historically done for our service. And all of the churches of the Elon community will be represented this uh, at 2 o'clock today. So I hope you can come up. That's right. It goes to Salvation Army, which is now the new home of the, food, the main food pantry for, uh, for Burlington, for many of our churches to feed into. This coming uh, Friday is a blood drive again. It will be held here in the Community Life Center, and that will be on Friday, November 13th. And if you'd like to... Some of you have been really good about wanting to give blood. If you'd like to, you can call the church office and we can try to get you uh, signed up. You also will be receiving something on the Elon Joys and Concerns of a way to directly uh, also sign up with, with the uh, Blood Drive folks. This coming Saturday, this has been a long-awaited, long-planned concert by Kate Campbell. Kate Campbell is a pianist and a guitarist. She will be up on the stage here. We have the ability to have, as we do for our worship services, up to 50 people. Um, we will have everybody spaced. 
And the first 50 people, if you want to buy the $20 ticket to please come, that will raise about $1,000 for KC Cures, which is a kidney foundation uh, uh, derivative or at least a place that, that will help with cancer of the kidney. And uh, you know that uh, our friend Sherry is uh, hosting this. This is on her birthday. And she says it doesn't matter if there's three of us here, we're going to have the concert. So, But if you'd like to come and be a part. If you really feel uncomfortable and don't want to be a part, please still consider doing a donation. And by the way, some of that money will be coming to the church as well. I think it's going to probably go into our Christmas cheer fund. So I hope that you uh, will want to be a part in some way with that. So you can see this is a pretty full week, a lot of things that are going on, and I hope that you will be willing to want to take part in some of those things. You know that uh, this Wednesday is Veterans Day, so we are going to be recognizing veterans today. And I know there may be a handful of you here, um, but we know that many of you are at home. And in the past, we always have you stand up, but we won't be able to do that today. So you may want to, on the comment section, may say, you know, four years in the Army or 20 years in the Navy or, or Marine Corps or whatever else, and we want to honor you today as well. Uh, but we're going to have some ways of doing that. So let's now prepare for worship by standing, if you are here and are able, for the call to worship. Call upon God's wisdom. She will answer. answer. Seek God's wisdom. She dwells in the midst of life. Follow God's wisdom. She leads in the path of light, light and, and generosity. generosity. singing, however beautiful, heartfelt, must be accompanied by the work of justice in community. What pleases God is to have justice pour from our lives like water and righteousness from our work like an ever-flowing stream. So let us pause for a moment. What parts of our lives, our community, our world are thirsting for waters of justice and righteousness. Let us pray.
God's grace flows through our lives, refreshing and making all things new. Let this grace flow from us as justice and righteousness that our lives and work may bless our world. In Jesus' name, thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the first letter to the Thessalonians, verses five through, no, excuse, verses, chapter five, verses one through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night when they shall say, there is peace and security. Then suddenly, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and for those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. This is Through this scripture, God is still speaking. So if the children will gather around at this point in time, that would be super. And if you've got your mom's purse nearby and she lets you get in it, you might want to join me to see exactly what she has. Because today, I brought my purse. Now, while my purse is small, it has a lot of flexibility. And why do we want to look at what's in your mom's purse or what's in my purse? Well, most of the time, my cell phone is in it because that's really important to have your cell phone in case you need some help along the way or you need to call someone. But you might have something like your mom might have some Kleenex because you never know if you might get a sniffle or your mom might get a sniffle. There might be some aspirin maybe for you or for your mom or your dad that being just in case that headache happens somewhere along the way. Mints are always good in case you forget to brush your teeth. And in this day and time, you know, we need an extra mask just in case we forget our mask when we get to ready to go somewhere because masks are very important this day. Of course, parents need a little cash every now and then or their credit cards in case you need to buy something. Or, and we do this all or in case we need to help someone. And so the things that are in your mom's purse not only help her, they help you. I bet she has snacks sometimes in the purse in case you get hungry, or she has something for you to write on or color with in case you get bored wherever you are. So it's important to be prepared to, to get ready to in case someone needs something. So with all that said, why am I telling you all this? Well, there's a story in the Bible, and Pastor Randy's getting ready to read the Bible story, but I'm going to kind of tell it for you guys. And Jesus asked his disciples, are you ready for God's kingdom? And the disciples look at each other, and they go, like, yeah, they're ready. What does Jesus mean? Well, there's a wedding. There was a wedding soon, and ten bridesmaids rushed around getting ready for the wedding, and they counted the oil lamps. There were ten, one for each bridesmaids to light during the party. And the ten bridesmaids packed their ten oil lamps, 
five packs of extra oil to make sure that the lamps shine bright all night long. But I forgot the extra oil, and all the bridesmaids waited and waited till the light to light their lamps, but the groom didn't arrive. And many rose, uh, the moon rose in the sky, and the bridesmaids began to get really sleepy. Oh no, I want to fall asleep, and it's getting dark. And their loud shouts woke the bridesmaids from their sleep. The groom is here. Let the party begin. Then the ten bridesmaids jumped up to their light to light their lamps. Five bridesmaids marched into the wedding with their lamps shining bright, and the five bridesmaids ran out of oil, and their lights burned out. Give us some oil for our lamps, they begged. But the five bridesmaids with the extra oil wouldn't share. Run home and get some. Hurry, hurry, they said. Five bridesmaids weren't ready, Jesus said. They missed the whole party. Always be ready for God's kingdom to come. So moms pack their purses so they're ready in case of everything. And we need to be packing. We need to be prepared. Many of you are scouts and you've been taught to be prepared. We always need to be prepared for our light to shine. Let's say a prayer about that. Gracious God, we know that each day we need to be prepared to share you, to share with others, because there are many in needs. Let our light shine so that we can share with others. Amen. For the next three weeks, we are going to be the last three weeks of this church year. This is, we're closing things out, even though it's such a gorgeous day today, it almost feels a summery, uh, at the very least, late summer. Um, You know, it doesn't feel like that. And it does feel like we're rushing a little bit with this Thanksgiving service, but I wanted to let you know that um, it's probably a good thing we chose the the Thanksgiving day when we did, Pastor Sharon, because um, this Thursday they're going to be lighting the Christmas lights over at at Elon University. So if you want to come see the light show, you'll be able to enjoy that starting this Thursday. That's their festival of lights. Uh, The reason they have to do that is because the students will only be here until just before Thanksgiving, and they won't be coming back until sometime in January. So... Uh, everything's rushed right now. Everything's different. Everything is unexpected. And these next three weeks, we're going to be dealing with three major parables in the Gospel of Matthew. These will be the last three weeks that we will be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, at least because of this uh, year with the lectionary. And so as I read the first of the three, uh, there, there are distinct stories in and of themselves. And as you know, parables in and of themselves are a very unique, have a very unique character. And so we want to be able to appreciate that as it comes around too. And you've already heard the crux of the story and many of us know it, but I'm going to go ahead and read it directly from Scripture. It's Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Listen now as I read. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom! Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us, and you better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, 
Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Thus ends our lesson. Let us be in prayer together. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, the title to my sermon today is actually a little bit of a con combination of the three weeks. Because in a sense, for the next three weeks, we're going to be preaching on pretty much the same thing. It's just different aspects of it. These three parables, these three accounts are a build-up, what I call the climax of Matthew. This is truly that moment other than the crucifixion because right after this text, we begin the uh, passion of Christ. We begin that time in which Jesus will go to be crucified. That this is what Matthew chose to put in this part of the gospel. Just before that very important story, it shows up in none of the other Gospels in this form or in this way. Obviously, one of the things that's important about our faith and one of the aspects of our faith that maybe we in the Protestant mainline church world don't talk about as much as some is this notion of an end time or a notion of a judgment day, a, a time at which something is going to change. And some have described it as a one-time event when it will all happen at once. Others throughout the last many thousand, a couple thousand years have developed ideas that this is happening all the time. And while some cynically have said this will never happen. But the parables themselves all talk about a sense of an ending point or a returning of someone coming. In this case, this is a bridegroom. In the case of next week, it will be a owner of a, of a field. And in the next case, it will be the king of glory. So it keeps kind of upping the stakes, if you will. But the bridegroom image is a common one, especially in apocalyptic literature, that talks about this relationship that we have with God that we are like the bride and God is like the bridegroom. Now, this isn't familiar to most of the weddings we come to. Um, I gotta be on real careful ground here. So Pastor Sharon, do you wanna agree with me that we usually more wait for the brides than we do the grooms? I, okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say any more. I'm just gonna be real careful there, okay? but. But this story shows about a bridegroom that we're waiting upon and is delayed. But we know that that is more about the story itself, about God returning through Christ. And again, this is shared even before Jesus goes to the cross. There's a, almost a sense that this has some kind of much bigger categorization or much bigger a feeling about it. And it definitely has almost an apocalyptic feel to it. That means that things that are unexpected will take place. And I don't know where you stand on this. I don't know where you feel uh, called to, to believe in this. But let's just ask this question. Do things unexpectedly happen in your life? Do things happen sooner than you want them to? Do things happen at a time at which you don't want them to happen? Absolutely. In other words, whether this is a comparison to those kinds of events in our lives, we have experienced times when things have happened in an unexpected time in an unexpected place. And we have to be ready whatever that ready means. How can one be ready when you've never done anything like that before? When you have received a diagnosis of a terminal illness, how, are you know to, how do you know to be ready to face something you've never done or spent any time with? 
Are you ever ready when a child is diagnosed with something that will change your whole life? How can you be ready for something like that? How can you be ready? Or are you always able to be ready when things happen in our lives? Maybe job losses, maybe the ending of a marriage, maybe well, we, the list could go on and on. We know that there are many situations that we face and we, we, we want to easily say we're ready for it all. But how are you ready? How do you give of yourself? I always think coming up on Veterans Day about all of our veterans. Some of you were drafted. Some of you volunteered. Some of you were planning on going for a career and others it was completely unexpected. How does one say that they're completely ready to join the military? Well, they don't assume you're ready, so they have what's called basic training. They give you the opportunity to learn and to do something, to develop your body, to develop your mind with the attitude of what it means to be in the military. And so then you go through this time, and then after basic training, you go into more training. We're always training. We as Christians have always talked about the idea. We use the word practices. But you have to, and, and this is where I come into my title, and this title is going to have, uh, you're going to see this title, the word investment now, over the next few weeks, this investment. You have to invest yourself in all that you do. So bridesmaids. I mean, are you trained to be a bridesmaid? You know, again, I don't know what bridesmaids were like in biblical times, if they were professional bridesmaids, but, but most bridesmaids are friends of, of a bride that are asked, and they're figuring out their way as they go. And this expectation that they're there to meet a bridegroom before they go in, again, these have nothing to do with any kind of, uh, any kind of traditions that we know about. But we've always been told that parables oftentimes have kind of a created their own little world, their own, their own sense of truth, so that they can tell a greater truth. And that is simply to be ready. And I can't think of any other way to be ready than to invest ourselves. To invest ourselves and invest who we are in everything that we do, in how we think, in how we live, and being aware that at any time something can happen, but how do you live that way? Can you really live each day like you might die today? You know, there's songs even written about this. Can you be ready for anything that could happen today, really? While this story and this, this point of the parable is important, it's an introduction to the three stories. First of all, be ready. Next week we're going to learn another aspect of it, and then yet in that third week we will learn something more. It's as if these three parables were meant to be together, but Matthew puts them together for a very important reason, about the coming of the kingdom. And while I know that many veterans, many people who have served in the military, go in with an idea that they have to give their all because they know that what might be asked of them is their all, is everything, literally everything. And when life and death is on the line, there seems to be a seriousness about this. And I, our hats go off to our veterans, for we know what they experienced and what they had to go through, some during wartime, some during peacetime, some staying in this country their whole, their whole service, others having to be on battlefields, others yet having to be able to make hard decisions and be able to do things within the realm of what they learned to do. We in the church invest ourselves in how we give leadership. You just were asked to invest yourself just recently through a stewardship campaign. And now, starting coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to be asking you again to be thinking about how you want to serve with your time now. 
what positions that are going to be opening up for our committees and our boards. We need people to help provide leadership. And you have to be willing to make a decision. And you know what everyone usually says? I don't know how to do that. Which is another way of saying, I'm not ready. Now, if it's I'm not willing, yeah, that's one thing. But most of us probably never feel completely ready to do any of these jobs. We're not trained for them. And many times in our jobs at the church, we have to run by the seat of our pants. We have to watch what's going on and just kind of fall into place. But we do it because it matters, because we invest ourselves. And whether those bridesmaids wanted to be ready or not, by the very fact that they became those bridesmaids, they were expected. Something was expected of them. And they, well, at least half gave of themselves and half didn't. I don't think there's any specific reason why it was half and half. I think it just sounded really good. Again, it's a story. And why a door would be shut at a wedding. The only time we ever locked a door at a wedding was about 30 years ago. I was in a wedding and the families didn't get along. And so... What happened was, was that everybody got in, we locked the doors so that no one else could come in to say, I object. <laughs> this can happen, friends. Sorry. But it's true. So maybe there are some locked doors at some weddings. But this is really a story about how we give of ourselves and what that means. And I can just say, as a pastor who's experienced over 30 years of ministry and been with people in lots of different situations, I have seen people who have faced all kinds of issues with bravery and with faith. Sitting with a mother of a five-year-old who was being operated on for the third time to, receive, to remove a cancerous tumor that would kill him months later. And to ask, how are you holding up? And she said, you know, I never knew I could ever do this. If you had asked me if I was prepared, I would have said absolutely not. But somehow, some way, I've been here for my son. I've been with people who have given of themselves and have shared service in the church in ways that have been extraordinary. Have made a difference in the life and the future of churches and communities. And they're just simple people. There was one woman in the last church I served. She lived in a house that was probably no bigger than this stage. She had duct tape around her microwave oven. Dare I say it, Pastor Sharon? I'll just be real careful. You'll agree with me, right? She was German. Oh, I want that, so I'm not going to say any more. When she died, she left over a million dollars to the church. She wouldn't spend any on herself and change the course of that church's life and community life. There are so many ways and so many facets of how people serve and are ready without saying it. Who are faithful in all that they do, who see the issues of the day and rise to the challenge, who see the love and the relationships that are broken that need to be fixed, who also see within their lives their own brokenness and their own pain, and yet they work to build a sense of themselves with God's love and God's help to be ready to be able to invest who they are. As I close, I just want to share 
that later today I'm going to be sharing some news with our trustees about a gift that's going to be given to this church and about how people in this church care about this church and how they've been ready to allow this church to continue to grow and to blossom and to become a true presence in the community. And out of simple faith, out of a sense of wanting to do the best that they can, things change. Change in unexpected ways, but allow us to see and to grow. That's the investment that we want to talk about. For the kingdom of God is among us. We may not be able to say verbally, yes, we're ready for it all. But if we remember that we are faithful each and every day, I know we are ready. Amen. And amen. Well, let's speak about our joys and concerns briefly. We know that we've been in a battering election. And there are people today who are dealing with levels of sadness and levels of joy. There are people who are trying to figure out what the future holds. And I just want to say, let's hold us all in prayer. Let's hold us all in prayer as we look to the future as a country and as a people in this community with election results as well and how that will take place. We know that there's been a lot going on in our own community. We had a situation just last week in which we made national and worldwide news and that unlike Ferguson and Kenosha and other cities, we're now on that list. Alamance County has become on that list. And we have to face up to that. Let's hold that situation in our prayers. We as the pastors will be involved. In fact, I was just in a meeting this week with Sheriff Terry Johnson and the chief of the Graham Police. And we've already agreed that we're going to be meeting again. There's a great deal that's going on behind the scenes right now, and we need to pray for these situations. We need to understand as well that in the midst of all of our deep and impassioned feelings, there's life that needs to go on and all of the people that are being impacted by COVID. We, up till now, we were able to say just till a few weeks ago that we had no one with COVID, and now we've had several cases in our church. We know that it is getting more serious. And I pray and ask all of you to be extra careful and extra vigilant, especially as we enter into this Thanksgiving holiday week or this holiday weeks ahead. Let us remember that there are right ways to do things and there are wrong ways. And I pray that we will be very sensitive to that. And I hope that you will look to see all the folks that are on our list for concerns, and they will keep coming. Let us now lift them all up as we come to God in prayer. But before we do, I'd like to recognize our veterans. And we're going to do it a little differently today. We're still going to hear the songs, and I'm going to announce them as she plays each of the, the little... Uh, medley of of the different branches and some of you may here may be in the military have, have been in the military and if you want to proudly stand you may when your branch stand, uh, comes up but if you're not if you're at home take a picture of yourself and put it on Facebook Elon alive if you want to uh, put on the line under Facebook live you know you know go army or go navy or whatever that would look like so let's go ahead and begin we start with the army Navy. And now 
the Coast Guard. Air Force. And finally, the Marines. We don't have a song for the Space Force yet, so we'll have to wait and see where that goes. So. But we just want to say thank you to all of our veterans. Thank you for your service to this country, and thank you for uh, standing up for us. Let's be in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that we can come to you for all things. And as we struggle with what it means to be ready in terms of being able to always confidently say we're ready to face anything, God, we know we're not. We know that there are situations that we may feel unprepared to do or unprepared for, and yet we pray in our faithfulness and in our living out our faith each and every day that we may find the courage and the way forward that we may know that you will be with us, that you are not shutting us out, but allowing us to be a part of this tremendous kingdom. I pray that you will give to each of us what we need for this journey. I pray as well, O oh God, in the joy that we have folks in our congregation who have served in the military over the years, and we pray thanksgiving for each of them and we honor them even now. We pray, O oh God, that you will remind us that as we come together today to give thanks, we have things to th be thankful for. And what we have to be thankful the most is for your presence in our life and that we are here yet again. And for those concerns that we lift up, I pray, O oh God, that you will be with each and every person that we have lifted up by name, knowing that there are so many more that there are other situations and other people that are in our hearts and our minds that we would like to lift up in this moment. So be with us in this moment of silence. For all this we pray, knowing that there are situations yet unresolved, knowing that we may need to stand up, we may need to rise up, we may need to be faithful in new and creative ways. For all these things we pray in the name and love of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come to a time of offering. We come to a time at which the empty plate represents the gifts that we are about to give and yet we will offer them in generosity of spirit, in faithfulness, and we pray now that you will be with us, O oh God, as we seek you first.
for these gifts that we have received that we can do your work in this world in your kingdom here on earth amen as is tradition eternal father strong to save has become kind of an official uh, song for veterans day as well as memorial day but you'll notice that the words are different this actually is a special 1940 pre-World War II, just, or just before World War II edition, recognizing all the services. So I do apologize in advance for some of the language. Um, a, a lot more brethrens. We know that there are a lot of sisterens too. And, uh, but if we'll take that in the spirit that it was written in 1940, that brethren meant both men and women, let us sing these wonderful verses. the Lord of hill and plain or wind. 
So this is the first time in seven or eight months that we've actually had more than one service in, the, in, a, in a Sunday. And that will be at 2 o'clock today at the Elon First United Methodist Church on Westbrook, right across from Twin Lakes. You can't miss it. it is the, you go into the main parking lot. There's going to be a place to drop off your food or your donation as you drive in. They're going to give you the band to tune into. Bring lawn chairs if you'd like to sit outside. The service will probably last 45 minutes, uh, and we'll see how things, we're not going to be able to do as much as we usually do. And uh, in the past, we always you know, had a big fe uh, eat fest afterwards, so we won't be able to do that, but we will be able to be with one another. And so I know this is something that I hope you will strongly consider today. So hopefully we'll see you out today. And now go, knowing that the peace of God is with you. Go knowing that you are ready because you are faithful. Go knowing that God is with you in all that you do. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. Amen.